Hi guys. It is an absolutely over the top, spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas. <coughs> it's technically Monday evening, March 12th, 2018, but we're going to pretend like, we're going to pretend like it is Wednesday morning, March 14th. 2018 because I'm going to be down joining 400,000 of my closest clueless moron friends at the South by Southwest Music Festival. So I need to do a an early edition of my weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant where I usually go on the pages of the mainstream media to find out how this planet <coughs> is heading directly into a burning lake of fire. Unfortunately, there's virtually no mention of, I won't say no mention, but pretty damn well close to no mention of climate change anywhere on uh, the mainstream media, media headlines. But I do want to thank my um, Lieutenant Fiesta Cranberry, who pretty much just does this job for me by sending me articles from this outfit called Science Daily sciencedaily.com. So uh, this is pretty much two-thirds of this is going to be a roundup from the past week's stories in sciencedaily.com. And there's a lot more. It's one of, it's, it's an excellent source of, um, of daily science updates on climate science and everything else. So I want to thank my Lieutenant Fiesta for doing my job for me and Silence Daily for taking up the slack from Yahoo News, whose editors just don't think climate change is really that important. And a few other odds and ends thrown in. So uh, let me dive right in. Uh, don't know if I even have my right glasses on or not. i got to put the little... dog over. Many versions of this story out there this week. Uh, several Alert Tribes members have sent me versions of this story. Uh, and this version comes coming from, uh, is this The Guardian? Who is this? Uh, Truth Dig, not The Guardian. Truth Dig. This is their spin on it. 20,000 scientists now underscore alarm over changing climate. There you go. Oh, shit, Sherlock. The letter warning humanity, which the first edition was written in 1992, the letter warning humanity from science from scientists has now been signed by over 20,000 scientists and the reason for this alarm is given in these charts and they break down nine reasons um, for the planet for humanity to be alarmed and looking at the whole bit uh, I could spend this entire rant breaking this down the charts show alarmingly accelerating carbon dioxide emissions. We were up worldwide again last year. Uh, that's the main thing. Declining access to fresh water, endangered species, and other dangers facing the globe. <clears throat> Only a redesign of our energy grid and the way we do industrialize society including giving up most use of plastics. Giving up most use of plastics and many pesticides and burning fossil fuels can avert the catastrophe they describe. Yes. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. So far, no sign that they are being taken seriously. No shit, Sherlock. Yeah, uh, a total redesign of our energy grid, 
collapsing industrial society, getting rid of plastics, pesticides, and fossil fuels. That's going to happen. Um, okay, so real quickly, the chart, we have ozone depletion, declining freshwater availability, overfishing, ocean dead zones, uh, the world's forest declining. I've had several, um, there's an absolute free fall. The world's biodiversity is vanishing at an alarming rate. Uh, let's don't forget population growth. Yes, as since 1992 when the, when the authors first had this warning to humanity, the human population has increased by approximately 2 billion people. A 35 percent increase. There you go. And the population of domestic ruminants now at 4 billion. And of course, we have uh, the chart global fossil fuel carbon dioxide emissions have increased sharply since 1960, not to mention uh, 1992. Um, relative to the 1951 to 1980 average global average rain global average annual surface temperature in parallel to CO2 emissions has also rapidly risen. Do you think so? The 10 warmest years in the 136 year record have occurred since 1998. We got some we got some fossil fuel burning going on here in Paradise and Garfield, Texas. There are some serious fucking rednecks in Garfield, Texas. He's probably my guess is my neighbor is rushing home to uh, read this warning letter to humanity uh, signed by twenty thousand scientists underscoring alarm over changing climate. That's got to be. Why wow, that man's in such a hurry to get home. Okay, what's on the minds of NASA? I didn't even realize that NASA still existed since Donald Trump, but apparently NASA is limping along. And what are they warning about this week? What lies within the permafrost will escape within decades, warns NASA. It is escaping right now, Mr. NASA. Anyway, the most pervasive human fear is the fear of the unknown. And one of the things we know very little about, unfortunately, is what lies inside that frozen layer of the tundra known as the permafrost. No shit, Sherlock. They call the temperfrost. Long thought to be permanently frozen, it is now melting much more rapidly than we ever thought. Hmm, reported NASA scientists in a study in the cryosphere uh, on Tuesday, and a lot of the stuff that lies within it, they warn, will be released within the next few decades. There you go. Uh, and we've already mentioned this last uh, week that over the next 300 years, over the next 300 years, uh, the amount of atmospheric carbon through methane as much as anything that gets released will be ten times the amount of carbon humans put into the air in 2016. Do you think so? Uh, yep, yep, yep. It is now melting much more rapidly 
than we ever thought. <clears throat> so let's go from the melting permafrost melting much faster than we ever thought. Let's go to San Francisco. Sea level rise could be even worse for San Francisco than previously thought. No shit, Sherlock. Mm, do we see a do we see a theme developing in the year 2018? Hmm. Do we see a a theme? 2018, the year we were fucked much faster than previously thought. A large swath of the San Francisco Bay Area will become especially susceptible to flooding as climate change pushes sea levels higher, while subsidence, while subsidence causes land levels to drop at, you know, at the same time, according to a new study. Previous research had already established that densely inhabited coastal areas are at risk as sea level rise, a phenomenon that shows signs of accelerate, accelerating. But a new study conducted by scientists from Arizona State and University of California, Berkeley, found the effects of rising waters will be magnified in parts of the Bay Area where the land is also sinking. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Uh, so. Let's see. Among the locations at elevated risk are San Francisco's International Airport. Foster City and Treasure Island, areas that face being inundated, could deal with, quote, unprecedented socioeconomic impacts, the authors warned. Do you think so? Um, and looking to the bigger picture, the number of people worldwide living in areas at risk is expected to triple in the coming decades and scientists caution that many coastal megacities are located in river deltas and lowlands subject to subsidence. D -D okay, I've mentioned this one before but it shortly bears repeating. This is from an outfit. It would be real nice if I knew who this was, but I have no idea who the hell it is. But anyway, whoever. How engineering Earth's climate could seriously imperil life. Um, anyway, I've already talked about, uh, about this. Looking at the year 2100, uh, they're, they're, like, 2100. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Scientists will be deploying planes to spray sulfur dioxide in the stratosphere where it converts into a sulfate aerosol, which reflects sunlight. Thus, the planet cools because of, yes, chemtrails. No shit, Sherlock. I love, who was the Alert Tribes member? The aerosol parasol. Is a, I, I think we need to start calling chemtrails the aerosol parasol. It's called solar geoengineering, and while it is not happening yet, while it is not happening yet, it is a real strategy that scientists are exploring to head off climate disaster. The upside is obvious, but so too are the potential perils 
not just for humanity, but for the entire natural world. A study out today in Nature Ecology and Evolution Models, what might happen if humans were to geoengineer the planet and then suddenly stop? The sudden spike in global temperature would send ecosystems into chaos, chaos, killing off species in droves. Not that we should not tackle climate change, it's just that among the many theoretical problems with geoengineering, we can now add its potential to rip ecosystems to shreds. There you go. The models in this study presented a scenario in which geoengineers add 5 million tons of sulfur dioxide to the stratosphere every year for 50 years. You know, Paul Beckwith in my interview is making uh, 5 million tons of sulfur dioxide pumped into the stratosphere every year for 50 years, sounding, making it sound like a couple of cows farting. Uh, there you go. But of course, you, you know, what they're, what they're uh, talking about is, is once you, you get the toothpaste out of the tube, you can never put it back in. Once we open this can of worms, it is opened. And so you can't stop once it is started. Uh, there you go. Knowing these risks, it might seem implausible that humans would just suddenly stop geoengineering efforts once they've started. Why not just keep pumping sulfur dioxide into the air ad finitum to keep the planet on life support? Mm, there you go. And there's a possibility that we might not willingly stop geoengineering. Yes. Uh, Anyway, this goes on and on. So uh, let's get to the bottom of this. Uh, the ultimate fear with geoengineering is that we are trying to alter a system that is much too complex for us to truly predict, says one of these... Uh, one of these planet huggers. So doing that can put us in a worse situation than we're in already. No shit, Sherlock. Called the frying pan or the fire. In the meantime, here's an idea. Let's dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The whole of life on Earth would certainly appreciate that. D, 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 D. Okay, let's dive into some of these Science Daily articles. Uh, this is just one week's worth of headlines from Science Daily. Wildfires set to increase. Could we be sitting on a tinderbox in Europe? Europe? North America, South America, Asia, Australia, Africa, might not be any wildfires in Antarctica for a while. Okay. 2017 was one of the worst years on record for wildfires in Europe with over 800,000 hectares, that's about 2 million acres of land burned in Portugal, Italy, and Spain alone. And as the world gets warmer and Europe's land gets drier, fires are set to get even worse, and not just for the hottest countries around the Mediterranean, even relatively safe 
relatively safe alpine mountain regions will see a rapid increase in fire danger unless action is taken to limit climate change. Hmm. There you go. Uh, next from Science Daily from Europe to the U.S., snowpack levels show dramatic decline in western states. This is a study from Oregon State University, a new study of long-term snow monitoring sites in the western U.S. found declines in snowpack at more than 90 percent of those sites and one third of those declines were deemed significant. Since 1915, the average snowpack in western states has declined by between 15 and 30 percent, the researchers say, and the amount of water lost from that snowpack reduction is comparable in volume to Lake Mead, the West's largest man-made reservoir. <coughs> there you go. Next. This, we're just going to stay in science daily for a while. Current deforestation pace will intensify global warming study alerts. No shit, so this is one of those uh, examples of, of amplifying feedbacks that the current pace of deforestation will intensify global warming as the current pace of global warming will intensify deforestation. This is why we are in a vicious cycle of being fucked. All right. Scientists affirm the prolongation of an annual deforestation of seven thousand square kilometers can nullify the any efforts for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. The study brings a new assessment on the, the importance of tropical forest and world and in, in world climate regulations and calculates a 0 0.8 degree C rise on Earth's temperature in a scenario in which they are extinct. And here we go. Wow. The global warming process may be even more intense than originally forecast unless deforestation can be halted, especially in the tropical regions. Um, Okay, this is one of these studies, authors from one of those universities down in Brazil. Quote, if we go on destroying forests at the current pace, in three to four decades, we will have a massive accumulated loss. Do you think so? This will intensify global warming regardless of all our efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, I've already been over this story a couple of times, so I'm just going to touch on it one more time. Increasing tree mortality in a warming world. This is the flip side of the other. This is the flip side of the story I just read. How you know, this is the, the, anyway, I think you know what I'm talking about. Trees in the tropics, especially important for the planet, face increasing threats. A mix of factors is contributing to an increasing mortality rate of trees in the moist tropics, where trees in some areas are dying at about twice the rate they were. 35 years ago. No shit, Sherlock. 
and then we're going to keep in the same vein once degraded Brazilian savanna does not regenerate naturally. According to this latest study, after being converted to pastures, areas of the so-called Cerrado become closed forests with poor biodiversity. Um, anyway, guys, uh, I would love to break all this down. Okay, let's leave behind uh, science. That just gives you a, a, a few ideas about science daily. Okay, we're going to go back over to Time Magazine. I mentioned this in my Clueless Moron Roundup rant. Oil companies agree on a climate change solution that would help their bottom line. And this is a story, as I say, I talked about it on Saturday. Uh, about how the oil companies are cheering on this unadulterated horseshit carbon capture and storage because they they understand that if they can convince these clueless fucking morons that all we got to do is stick the, the co2 suck it out of the air and just stick it down in the ground there's no reason we cannot go right on about our business burning all the fucking fossil fuels we feel like. We'll just suck it out of the we'll just suck it out of the air. Stick it in the ground. Okay, what's the New York Times up to this week? <clears throat> the EPA chief actually wanted a climate science debate. Trump's chief of staff stopped him. <clears throat> John F. Kelly, the White House chief of staff, has killed an effort by the head of the EPA to stage public debates challenging climate change science. According to three people familiar with the deliberations, thwarting a plan that had intrigued President Trump even as it set off alarm bells among his top advi advisors. The idea of publicly critiquing climate change on the national stage has been a notable theme for Scott Pruitt. Uh, for nearly a year he has championed the notion of holding uh, military style exercises known as red team blue team debates to question the validity of climate change but of course the flip side of that is all it was going to do was expose the complete total fucking clueless idiocy of the climate change deniers and uh, so so far Kelly has managed to uh, to uh, get Trump to squash this idea. And I was really looking forward to this uh, so these goddamn climate change deniers could be made laughing stocks out of. Ain't gonna happen. Uh, all right, well, unfortunately, this story out of Forbes. Forbes keeps eating my stories. Uh, what they were talking about is how big oil is the new big tobacco. Talking about, you know, all of these years about how big tobacco uh, pulling this horse shit that smoking does not cause cancer. And now, uh, you know, they're comparing what's going on in the climate change denial playbook is lifted directly out of the big tobacco playbook you know convincing these these clueless fucking morons uh, that that burning fossil fuels you know has little effect uh, to no effect I guess on climate change it's the same goddamn uh, horse shit and the same sneaky shit ways that Big Tobacco pulled this uh, shit off for all those years. Well, the Guardian is really uh, putting their, their uh, thumb on the pulse of what people really give a fuck about. 
uh, with climate change. And this truly is striking terror into all of the little lefty greenies' hearts. You better believe wine prices to rise as bad weather brings worst grape harvest in 50 years. Global production slumps to its lowest level since 1961 as major growers were hit by freakish weather in 2017. It's the best kind of bad news. It's the kind of bad news best served with a stiff drink. The price of standard supermarket wines such as Pinot Grigio, which is exactly the one I drink, could rise by up to 30% this year as the impact of 2017's disastrous harvest is felt on the high streets. You got to uh, love uh, this example of making lemonade out of lemons. French hydroelectric firm builds wind turbines as Swiss glaciers melt. French hydropower firm CNR anticipating the impact of climate change and the possible disappearance of glaciers in the Swiss Alps now plans to sharply increase its solar and wind capacity to compensate for lower water levels on the Rhone River. Yes, uh, the Rhone um, is one of the most exposed rivers to climate change as it is fed mainly by alpine glaciers which are shrinking due to global warming. But uh, I'm going to return to Science Daily for one of these. I've got two more stories here. One for the techno-utopians here in Science Daily. The knee slapper, one of the two knee slappers of the week. Models show how to limit global temperature rise to one and a half degree C. That there are several ways to limit global temperature rise to one and a half degree by 2100. And new research shows under what conditions this could happen. Yes. So we are going to limit global temperatures to one and a half degrees C. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so, uh, in the successful scenarios, by 2030, greenhouse gas emissions have already peaked and begun a decline that continues rapidly over the following two to three decades. So zero net greenhouse gas emissions are reached between 2055 and 2075. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes. Uh, so, uh, where economic and population growth continue as they have done historically, energy demand in 20. 50, for example, will be limited to 10 to 40 percent above 2010 levels. And then, of course, we have uh, renewable energy saving the planet. Yes. And then the final sentence. <clears throat> In the real world, other factors such as social acceptability and international co cooperation, for example, can have a large effect 
on the feasibility of us staying below one and a half percent, policy advisors will need to take these into consideration. No shit, Sherlock. That we're going to wind up with one more look back at this uh, last story from Science Daily that I did an entire rant on the, uh, the uh, single biggest knee slapper of the week. If you missed the full rant, I'm just going to touch on it here. Global fisheries to be on average 20% less productive in the year 2300. How many years have they been saying that uh, global fisheries will have completely collapsed by the year 2050? How many years have they been saying that there will be more plastic in the oceans than fish by the year 2050? How many times do we have to see over and over again the situation is worse than we thought? But no, this new study says in the next 300 years, in the next 300 years, global fisheries will be down by 20% due to climate change. Uh, I don't know if this is the April Fool's edition of Science Daily coming out early or what. But anyway, with that, I will wrap up uh, this supposedly March 14th, 2018 version of uh, my climate change meltdown roundup rant. And since it really is Monday evening, I can wrap up the doomosphere for a few days and hop in my gas-sucking truck with my little dog and we are heading to Austin, Texas in about one hour from now to join 400,000 of our closest, clueless, lovable moron friends for the South by Southwest music party and I will be back in Garfield, Texas one week from today, the good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Bye, guys.